And uh, joining me now are three of the best political analysts in the country. We have syndicated columnist and CNN contributor Miguel Perez. We have columnist for the New York Daily News and host of the morning show on WWRL, also a CNN contributor, Errol Lewis, and editor for OpinionJournal.com, James Taranto. And gentlemen, thank you. It's always a pleasure. One of the great controversies of the week is the Illinois Senate seat, uh, and we have uh, Roland Burris. Actually, he's quoted in today's Wall Street Journal as saying, I'm a senator, and it sounds good. Uh, let's listen to uh, what else he had to say, and then we'll, we'll discuss for a minute. The governor has the constitutional and statutory authority to make the appointment. That's what uh, his responsibilities are, and he has carried out that responsibility. The reason why I accepted it is because this will take a major issue off the table for our state. We will be fully complimented in the 111th Congress uh, when, uh, when we go into session. Now, this is not about his credentials in any way. It's, it's certainly the attendant political environment that this, is, this appointment's being made in, right, James? Yeah, and I think that he is probably right on the law. There was a 1969 Supreme Court case called Powell versus uh, uh, McCormick involving Adam Clayton Powell, a congressman from Harlem, uh, and the Supreme Court said that the House could not refuse to seat him because he had been duly elected. It appears that Burris has been duly appointed, and probably the same precedent would apply. But it sounds as though the Senate is going to try not to seat him, so we may be in for a big legal battle. And I hope that Burris gets in, because I just think this guy is incredibly entertaining. Have you seen the picture of his monument? <laughs> this guy has bought a funeral plot, and he's built a big monument to himself, listing all of his accomplishments. His son is named Roland II. His uh, grandson is named Roland III. His daughter is Rolanda. I mean, this guy has to get out of Illinois. The state isn't big enough to contain his <laughs> ego. <laughs> <laughs> you know, just that we, we count on you for the personal touch. But, you know, it really, you know, you bring up this point that, you know, uh, Democratic aides on Capitol Hill say they're going to ask the doorkeeper and sergeant at arms to block him next week. Errol? Yeah, a, a very undignified spectacle uh, could happen. And, and it's really unfortunate because, as James said, I mean, he, the man's been duly elected. I mean, going back to appointed. Powell. Pe uh, uh, back, uh, appointed. But back to Powell versus McCormick. Uh, by the time they straightened that out and went all the way to the Supreme Court, two years had elapsed and Adam Powell had to run for office all over again. So uh, what the game is here, and they're pretty upfront about it, is that they just want to delay this whole process. They know they don't have the law on their side. Uh, the opponents of Rod Blagojevich want to delay this until they can impeach him, uh, make the appointment moot, and uh, send Roland Burris on his way. And uh, he and the people of Illinois deserve a lot better than that. You know, it does seem a little bit unfair to the state of Illinois to be playing games with the Senate seat, but um, oh. I have to say, the political games are always legitimate, right? But it's unfair to the American people. I mean, look, you know, they, he said, he, Roland Burris just said, take a major issue off the table. We have much more important problems in this country to be worried about whether this guy gets seated or not. And the Democrats are making an, a, a complete fools of themselves, complete fools of themselves by taking this on, making a spectacle of it. They should have just said, okay, look, legally the guy is in, we'll have to wait two years, let's have an election in two years, and let's just let it rest. Instead of making a big spectacle that only shows how disorganized that the party is and in terms of you know divided they are and here is a de the democratic fighting with itself right now yeah the democratic party you know we thought we would see a little bit of smoothing over of the process once the election is over but it seems it's at, at, at election intensity right now well i primarily because Blagojevich allegedly tried to sell Obama's Senate seat, creating this big uh, kerfuffle in Illinois. Well, it's uh, by the, by, by the way, I, I just wanted to add, if uh, Blagojevich is impeached and removed from office, that, that doesn't make the problem go away. Burris will still have a claim because he has been appointed by the governor, uh, and uh, the lieutenant governor will become governor. He may try to make another appointment, but Burris will claim that there is no vacancy. I think he's probably right. The easiest way to make this issue go away would actually be for the lieutenant governor to say, if he becomes governor, he'll go along with the Burris appointment. He'll, he would nominate Burris, in effect. That would, uh, that would render the whole question What's the moved. likelihood that happen? I don't know. It, if they're smart, it's high, but I don't know if they're that smart. Okay. Let's um, also go to another little wrangle, um, Governor Patterson uh, and the uh, 
the great uh, debate over this U.S. Uh, so the Senate seat in New York. Um, now, Bill Clinton is a name that's surfacing. Thoughts on that? Well, the Caroline Kennedy idea is interesting. The Democrats uh, are going to have in the new Congress 26 out of New York State's 29 House seats, right? But no one in the House apparently is good enough. Uh, he has to go to Caroline Kennedy, the daughter of a, of a president. Uh, apparently, the Democrats were so impressed with the Bush administration, they decided to go whole hog with dynastic politics. <laughs> Errol? Well, there, there is a problem facing the governor, and it's a political problem. He has to run for re-election. This is going to be one of the most high-profile and important things he does during his short time as uh, governor. And um, it's not entirely clear that, although there are a lot of uh, longtime uh, congressmen and women uh, right. in the New York delegation, the reality is it's the most expensive media market in the country. You have to – it's really just a, a whole different uh, kind of a – I mean, to try and run 19 million people in this state. Big expensive media markets, you've got to get all over the place. It takes a lot more to uh, to suddenly move up to that level. Patterson is looking for somebody who can uh, fill, fill the bill, who can take on that very large amount of political responsibility on short notice. And Caroline Kennedy is one of only a few people in the state who fit the bill. Miguel, we're going to hold your, your very important thought for just a minute. We're going to take a, a quick break. We'll have more with our panel in just a moment. First, a reminder to vote in tonight's poll. And our question was, do you agree with the Senate Democratic leadership's decision to block Roland Burris from taking over President-elect Obama's Senate seat? Yes or no? Cast your vote at LewDobbs.com, and we'll bring you the results in just a few minutes. We're now back with our panel, Miguel Perez, Errol Lewis, and James Taranto. Uh, we were in the middle of discussing uh, filling uh, Hillary Clinton's Senate seat, and um, Governor Patterson actually has spoken out. There's some discussion now about a, a caretaker until uh, the election in 2010. Here's what he had to say about that. I'm actually opposed to that. It would cause New York to lose seniority, and in the United States Senate, the most effective senators are the ones that have seniority. So I'm hoping that the person I select wins the primary. Well, that makes perfect sense. Also, uh, Mr. Patterson said he won't fill the seat until after Hillary Clinton is confirmed as Secretary of State. What do you think, Miguel? Yeah, well, I get the impression that the governor is really enjoying all the attention he's getting over this decision, first of all. Now, here's a governor who has, was not elected himself. Right. I don't believe anybody should have so much power. Uh, no governor. I mean, now we got several governors selecting senators, but it, it really should be up to the people. Special elections should be held. But now you got Governor Patterson, who was not elected governor himself because he inherited you know, this this position, uh, selecting a U.S. senator. Uh, it, it's 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 gotten to the point now where I really I, I really disagree with him. I really think it has to be a placeholder because it's becoming a, a beauty pageant with the Kennedys and so forth. What we really need is people to have an opportunity to, you know, if it's Kennedy, let it be Kennedy in 2010. She has plenty of time to appeal to the people, not to just one person. Mm -hmm. that, makes, that makes perfect sense. Let's move on to another one. We have, we have so many to choose from. Um, the current Senator Norm Coleman's term expires tomorrow, and the recount, um, uh, the Democratic contender Al Franken, is up by 49 votes. There's still a court challenge. Uh, will we see a Senator Franken in office or no? It depends on what happens with the court challenge. It sounds like the Republicans in the Senate are going to filibuster to stop uh, Franken from being seated. This is a different question from Patterson because it's right. an issue of whether Franken is, in fact, a duly elected senator from Minnesota. Uh, so that seat may remain uh, vacant for a while until, uh, until the court's right. And out. a longtime incumbent, Norm Coleman, actually will have to vacate that seat. He may even have to pack up his office and lay his staff off and so forth, leaving the people of Minnesota without representation. You know, someday we're going to learn how to run an election in this country. We've got three instances of a fairly routine, uh, easily predictable uh, circumstance causing turmoil in three entirely yeah. different ways. It certainly is generating a lot of discussion. Miguel. I agree, I agree. And I think uh, uh, Coleman, you know, alienated a lot of uh, people uh, when he was... Uh, uh, in, in office, and I think that it's, it's gotten back, it's fired back. That's why the, the race is so close. There's a lot of people that, 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 obviously, the state is very divided over who they want their senator to be, and, and it looks like it's going to be, stay that way as long as this is in court, and it's going to be in court for a long, long time. Mm -hmm. You know, I'd like to play a sort of uh, spirit of the New Year game with you guys, if oh, you boy. don't mind, and, and ask you, uh, like, three questions. Um, so the first question is, is Senator Kennedy, yes or no? No. Uh, if I had to bet, I'd say uh, more likely than not. Yes. Okay. Senator Burris. Yes. 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 Okay. And Senator Franken. 
Maybe not uh, right away, but uh, eventually, probably. All right, and another quick one. We don't have much time, but the top political story of next year. What do you think? Well, I hope the top political story of next year will be Barack Obama, how much of his agenda he carries out, how he, uh, you know, balances uh, appealing to the center with appealing to the left. Of course, it could be something completely different, but I hope it's not because usually when it is, it means it's some sort of disaster. Disaster, yes. Mm -hmm. The economy and specifically passage of the Employee Free Choice Act. There's 60 million people who say they want to be in unions. They're not in unions. It's a key piece of legislation that could change uh, middle class standing for, for uh, tens of millions of people. We have 10 seconds. The economy, how well Obama delivered on all his promises. All right. Thank you very much. <laughs> Still ahead, he has shown extraordinary courage on and off the battlefield. This Navy SEAL is an inspiration to us all as he recovers from serious wounds sustained in Iraq. Heroes is next. I was